What is going on, everyone? We are back with another episode from our Raiders franchise in Madden 16. It is week 16, and this week we are on the road playing against the Denver Broncos. The season, pretty much all but over. We've wrapped up the division and the first round bye, but we did have an injury last week. Percy Harvin, ruptured disc, out six weeks. So we are going to put him on the IR, and could this be the last time we see him on the Raiders roster? Injury-prone wide receiver, but as a result, we're going to sign... Jaron Brown, a actually not too bad looking receiver, got some good speed, has some good catching attributes, so 75 overall, he will provide some depth for us, but looking at the standings now, Steelers lead the AFC North with the Browns behind them, Jaguars and Titans are in it in the AFC South, in the AFC East, it's the Patriots and the Jets tied with the Bills still behind them in it for the playoffs, and then in the West, it is the Raiders and then the Broncos and the Chiefs fighting over a wild card spot. So looking at it, it's the Raiders and Steelers at the top. Then you have the Jaguars also fighting with the Steelers. Actually, the Broncos still an outside shot at the first round bye. And you have the Patriots, Jets, Chiefs, and Titans battling out four of the wild card positions. In the a NFC North, it's the Bears and Packers tied. In the South, it is the Saints, a clear cut. And first, actually, all three other teams do have a technically outside shot there. NFC East, it's the Cowboys, Clemson the Division, the Eagles are there fighting for a wild card, and then it's the Cardinals and Seahawks. That is a poor, poor division there, battling it out for the division and a possible wild card. So in the NFC, it's the Cowboys and Bears at the top, Packers right behind them, Eagles at 8-5, Saints are there, Cardinals, and then the Lions, I think, technically have an outside shot at a wild card as well. So that is the updated standings around the league. Now into the game, Matthew Stafford, quarterback for the Broncos, 2,500 yards passing this season. The Broncos having a good year, but they could use a win today to help them with their playoff pitcher. And they're going to start it out here. The pass complete, Matthew Stafford. Going to find his receiver, second and 10 now from the 42. It is going to be C.J. Anderson up the middle, and he is going to take it down to the 36-yard line. Six-yard carry for him on that play. But now third and four from the 36-yard line. It's going to be pistol formation. Stafford, quick throw. He's going to find Demarius Thomas. He's got the first down, and Stafford is 3 of 4 to start this game. Now second and 10 from the 28-yard line. It's Matthew Stafford. Hand off to C.J. Anderson up the middle. He's going to get a few yards there, four on the play, but that's it. So another third down here for the Broncos, third and five. Can Stafford convert on another third down? He's looking, he's throwing in a flag on the play. Pass interference on the defense. That was a poor, poor defensive play. I'm not sure who that was that got flagged, but now second and 10 for the Broncos. Looking to cap this drive off. The pass is gonna be fumbled. And I feel bad about this one because they don't even review it. That was not a fumble. I'm sick of this game calling these ridiculous fumbles, but we are gonna get the uh, fumble. In the touchback, so in the game now, Chase Moss, first and 10 for the Raiders. Darren Ellis on the carry here is going to get a first down, 12 yards for him on that carry. Now second and five from the 38-yard line. As we have 3.30 remaining in this first quarter, it's going to be Moss throwing downfield, and it's going to fall incomplete. We had Cooks there, a difficult, difficult throw in coverage, but still he almost came down with it. So now third and five, we're looking to keep this drive going as it's going to be Moss, and we're going to throw downfield, and it's going to be nearly caught, but it's not going to be caught. So two for five, Moss, to start this game. Fourth and five, we're kind of in a weird position here. We're going to go for it. Let's see if we can pick this up, take a chance, as Moss going to step up, and we are going to have Amari Cooper, and he's just going to get the first down there. Thought he might not get it, but we have it first and 10 now from a 31. Moss to his right, looking for an open receiver, and we're going to get a pass interference call as pretty much the same as the last trip down on the other end for the Broncos as we earn a free set of downs here. So first and 10 for the 15. Moss the throw to Tavon Austin as he's playing in place for the injured Percy Harvin. He's going to take it down for the first down to the four. First and goal now from the four-yard line, looking to finish this drive off. Moss is going to try and do it himself, and he is going to do it, falling into the end zone. For the touchdown, and it's an early 7 to nothing lead for the Raiders. As the Broncos take back over, now second and four here. Last minute of the first quarter. Matthew Stafford, quick throw. He's going to find Barksdale, and he's going to pick up a first down out to the 50. Stafford, 6 of 8, 78 yards for him in that first quarter. As now here we are going to have one more play in this first quarter, and Stafford is going to throw an interception. Bruce Irvin, beautiful defensive play there on C.J. Anderson. And now we actually do jump ahead quite a bit here in the second quarter. We could not do anything after the turnover, and then we kind of exchanged uh, three and outs for a little bit. So we have it 3.30 to go. Moss going to complete that pass 
to his tight end, Lucas Jackson. As we're now just before the two-minute warning here, second and five play action again. Moss looking downfield. We've got a receiver, and we are going to find Tavon Austin, the second big catch he's made in this first half, filling in very nicely for Percy Harvin. Now first and ten, and it's going to be a handoff to Ellis. Runs into his own man, but he's still going to end up getting a nice gain there. Seven yards for him on that carry, as we'll take our time here. Three timeouts, but no need to rush it. Third and three now. It's going to be Moss, and he tries to find Brandon Cooks there. Thought we had him, but he cannot hold on to it, so we will kick the field goal. One minute to go now. The Broncos looking for one more shot to put some points on the board. It's going to be Gilmore, the tight end, with the catch there down to the 48. Broncos will call the timeout. They have just one remaining here with 52 seconds left at the 48. It's going to be Matthew Stafford, and he's going to find Barksdale, and he's going to be close to the first down. Out of bounds at the 42, but after a false start penalty, it's now second and 15 as it's going to be Stafford looking downfield. Gilmore with the catch, but tackled immediately. So the Broncos are forced to call their final timeout. So third and 18 here, 20 seconds remain. Looking grim for the Broncos being able to put points on the board here before halftime. But Stafford, a lot of time to throw. And he's eventually going to find Julian Edelman downfield. And the Broncos will get the field goal unit out in time. And the kick is up, and it is good. So... Going into halftime, it is going to be 10-3. to An odd first half. No one really establishing any sort of dominance. Obviously, the Broncos having the turnover issues, although the one really wasn't a turnover. But we begin this third quarter, second and four from the 41. And we go halfback screen here, but it's just not quite going to be set up good enough as Ellis is going to be tackled very quickly. So third and six, looking to avoid a three and out here on our first drive. It's going to be Moss to the right looking. We have a receiver floating it up there, but Brandon Cooks can't come down with it. And we will have to punt the ball back to the Broncos. So here we go, Matthew Stafford. Under center, looking to make something happen here. He's looking downfield. The throw is going to be complete. Julian Edelman is going to hop unnecessarily, but at the end of the play, he is going to be hurt. But he is down to the 41-yard line, so big pickup for the Broncos there. Second and five now from the 36-yard line. It is going to be Stafford and shotgun. Anderson to his right. He's going to hit it off to him, and he's got some room to run. Kind of hurt himself running into his own lineman there, but he is going to be close to a first down as they have it now. Third and three from the 34. Anderson easily going to pick up that first down as the Raiders run defense struggling a little bit here in this third quarter. Now second and 12. It's an empty backfield for Stafford. Matthew Stafford looking flag on the play. What's that going to be for? The pass going to be complete to Junior Hemingway, but what's the flag? Is it going to be holding on the offense? Yes, it is holding on the offense, so they will be backed up 10 yards. Joey Spain is going to be the culprit there, so now second and 22 from the 36-yard line. Stafford pistol formation. Anderson behind him. He's going to go play action. He's looking downfield. He's going deep, and he's going to have his receiver. It's Barksdale bringing it down. TJ Carey, nice pass coverage, but Barksdale, an unbelievable catch. And the Broncos have tied it up. So 10-10, your score. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Darren Ellis having a quietly good game. 96 yards rushing for him as he has continued to be the beast he is all season. As here, third and two, we're going to pick up the first down. Jackson on the reception. 10 of 19 for 84 yards. That tells you how good this Broncos secondary is as it's now first and 10 from the 41. Moss, a lot of time here, but we cannot get it away. We just needed to throw that one away. We couldn't do it. Reyes with the sack. So third and eight now. Last minute of the third quarter, and it's going to be Moss. We're going to find Tremaine Lucas. He's down the sideline. A lot of room to run here. Trying to go over the stiff arm. It isn't exactly going to work. Down at the 11, so first and 10 now. Can we get a score before the end of the third quarter? It's going to be Moss looking, looking. He's going to take a hit, but he shakes off the sack. Now we're just going to take off the spin move. Not going to work. Tackled down at the 5. So we cannot score. And now as we're into this fourth quarter, it's third and four. The quick pass. And Amare Cooper, nice find there from Moss. The just simple slant route. We time it perfectly, just assuming Cooper's going to be there. And he is. So we retake the lead, 17 to 10. Nine minutes to go in this game. And Matthew Stafford had second and eight. A poor throw as he's got 246 yards passing, but does have the touchdown and the interception. Now third and eight. The Broncos need a first down here as it's going to be Stafford. He's looking a lot of time to throw, but he's going to face pressure now. He's just going to go downfield, double coverage, and it's going to be intercepted. TJ Carey with the response for the touchdown on the last drive. Going to pick this ball off and a huge turnover as the Broncos, their third turnover of the game. We have it now, second and six. Latavius Murray with the carry. He's only going to pick up one, or excuse me, make that two as it's now going to be third and four as can we get the first down here? as we don't want to go three and out after that touch, or the interception, excuse me, and we will not. Darren Ellis with the catch out of the backfield. Nice catch there as it's now first and 10 from the 47. Ellis up the middle here. Big hole to run through. He's going to pick up a first down as we're able to kill a lot of clock here on this drive. Under five minutes remaining in the game. 
Now second and nine, it's gonna be a pitch out to Ellis looking for his blocks, but no, the shoestring tackle there. We had a lot of running room, but instead now it's third and 11 as it's gonna be Moss looking downfield. Wide open is Tremaine Lucas. Can he beat his man? No, that would have been a touchdown. Another key tackle there for the Broncos, but is that really gonna stop us here? Second and five from the nine, Ellis looking for the end zone as we kind of missed the hole there, but we still do get the first down. 22 carries for Darren Ellis for 130 yards, but now second and goal. Can we finish the drive off? No, we cannot as Von Miller chases us down in the backfield. So it is now gonna be third and goal from the 13 yard line. We're at the two minute warning here and I'm just gonna run it just to try and force the Broncos to call a timeout. We will make this a two position game. So 20 to 10, your score, 149 to go. The Broncos need to move the ball quickly and they can only do it with two timeouts. But here are the throw and this one's gonna be intercepted in a poor throw from Matthew Stafford. Ha ha, Clinton Dix with a pick and he is gonna try and succeed, diving in for the pick six. What a poor throw from Matthew Stafford. And in this fourth quarter, he has kind of imploded a little bit. Some poor, poor throws from Stafford and that interception absolutely costly for the Broncos as there is no shot they can win this game now. But second and 10, they are gonna give some efforts here as Stafford gonna go deep and he is gonna find Joseph Barksdale, the best part of this Broncos team. Barksdale has had an absolutely amazing game, but it's not gonna be enough. We win it 27 to 17, a little bit disappointing because that was a competitive game, but Stafford just gave it away there at the end. 79 QB rating for him, 91 for Moss, 24 of 36, 15 for 25 for Moss. Not the greatest game. We only end up with 158 yards, 325 for Stafford, but he had three interceptions to go along with his two TDs. Moss, on the other hand, no interceptions and one TD. For the running game, another good game for Darren Ellis, 23 for 135. CJ Anderson, just nine for 29, 3.2 yards per carry, rough day for him. The receivers, it is going to be Barksdale with five for 123 and two touchdowns. Edelman for 79. Tremaine Lucas leads us with 59. Taven Austin right behind him with 56. And then on defense, Washington leads all tacklers with 11. Ha ha, Clinton Dix, two tackles for loss. A sack for Irvin, and the interceptions for Irvin, Dix, and Carey, and we're going to stay right here. The MVP, I'm giving it to Ha Clinton Dix, kind of the embodiment of a very, very good defensive win in this game. He had the pick six, the interception, and two tackles for loss, so I'm going to give him MVP of week 16. I think it could go to a couple different guys, but I'm going to give it to him. Let me know in the comments down below who you think was MVP of week 16, but now we move on. Final week of the season, nothing in question here. Week 17, it is a home game against the Seattle Seahawks. Struggling on the season, just six and nine. Probably gonna rest some players because it's the last week. We don't want any injuries. We had issues with that last year, so we're gonna maybe give some guys some rest, see some guys play that don't get a lot of playing time, just to kind of test some guys out to see if we want to bring them back next year. So that is what you have to look forward to. We'll take a look at the playoff pitcher before our game next week as well. But that's gonna be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe to see any future videos that I make. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.